Hello, everyone. Welcome to our, what is this, number two, Sherry? Yes. Number two webinar from Learning Glass Solutions. Uh, my name is uh, Matt Anderson, and uh, we have uh, Eric Johnson in the room and Sherry Shopoff in the room. And today we're going to talk about the uh, insertion of digital images. Um, we're going to talk for about 15 minutes, and then we've got 15 minutes of Q&A. So on your uh, Zoom chat window, you should, down at the bottom, have a Q&A button. And if you type in some questions there, we'll look through them uh, in a little bit. And certainly, if there's any issues that uh, we're having right now, any technical issues, just chime in, and I'll take a look at the Q&A and see what's going on. So the first thing that you probably notice is we do have, in fact, some uh, digital insertion of an image right now. And this is just a PowerPoint um, slide with some text on it. And what we're using in this case is something called the frosted glass. Okay, so there's sort of two approaches to uh, putting digital images in. One is to use the digital insertion via computer or a video switcher. And the other approach is just to project it onto the glass with this frosted glass. So what we have here is a partially opaque screen. You can tell when I move my hand across, right, my hand disappears. And we have a projector sitting in front of it that's projecting onto the glass. Now, the projector is set to desktop rear mode, so it flips it. And that means it's correct orientation for me and hence correct orientation for you once the camera flips it again. The nice thing about this setup is you can now highlight on your document and it's right here in front of you. Okay, you don't actually have to look at the confidence monitor over there. You can look at the document right here in front of you. So if, for instance, you wanted to highlight the word on, you can do that very easily. And the registration is really easy. If you wanted to say, oh, it's important to have a black background, then you can pick out exactly what text you're using. Now, there's a couple tricks here to making this work. One is the alignment of the camera and the projector needs to be such that you don't see the reflection of the projector in the camera. Okay, you can use a polarizer to try and minimize some of that, but typically these cameras have multiple polarizations coming out of it, so you're never going to get that glare eliminated completely. So we have our projector set pretty low, and therefore it doesn't pick up the reflection in the camera. Um, the other trick is you want to work with your images a little bit. So can we switch to that one, Eric? There we go. So this is the exact same document, but it is black text on a white background versus white text on a black background. And you can see the difference automatically. When you do this, you're lighting up the entire frosted glass with all this white light. It causes a, a very disturbing image over there and you can't really see the text very well. So if I write some text here, it's a little hard to see there. But if I go back to the black background, now you can see exactly what I wrote. Okay, so that's one of the tricks. And to see how this works with something like a more complicated image, let's go to uh, this structure right here. Um, this is some sort of children's playground structure, I believe. Um, is that what it is, Eric? Oh, no, Eric's telling me it's so. DNA. Hold on, I'm being told it is DNA. <laughs> okay, good. It is DNA. We know what DNA is, of course. It's deoxyribonucleic acid. And it has all these base pairs, right? You've got uh, uh, guanine and cytosine and avocado and tomato and I guess this is the California version of uh, DNA. Okay, As you look at this DNA you say, ah, oh, what's happening in this space right here? Okay, It might be the same thing that's happening in this space right here. And so that ease of registration is really nice with complicated images. If you put the same image on a white background, it doesn't really look as good, okay? It's a slightly different image, of course, but you get the idea black on a white background is not as good as white on a black background, okay? So that's sort of how the frosted glass works. 
Uh, the frosted glass is a piece of frosted plexiglass and you attach it to the front of your learning glass. This allows you to write anything you want behind it and it doesn't affect the projection onto the, uh, onto the frosted glass itself. It's important when you put your frosted glass on to put the frosted side closer to your learning glass. Okay, if you make it closer to your learning glass, then all the writing that you put back here will still be crisp and clear. You can see that when I put my hand up against it, it's pretty crisp and clear, but as soon as my hand comes back off the glass, it becomes difficult to see. All right, so this is the benefit of frosted glass, is this idea of registration. The downside, of course, is this, right? If I stand behind it, I become opaque. All right, so that's the downside. But if you have elements where you really need to register precisely, frosted glass is the way to go. Uh, the other approach that we wanted to talk about is just digital insertion. And so instead of doing a projection on here, we can do digital insertion. And let me pull off the frosted glass and we will show you what that looks like. Okay, so now we're back to traditional learning glass. And what Eric has done is he has done this digital insertion of that image that we were looking at before, right, that DNA. The nice thing about the digital insertion is it's really pretty easy to do, and we're going to show you how to do it, but you also get slightly higher quality images, okay? You'll notice that this thing looks much more crisp than it did before. There's a big downside, which is now I don't have the image right here on the glass in front of me. I actually have to look over there at the confidence monitor. And so if I want to identify elements, I have to look elsewhere. Oh, that must be there. And this is that. Okay. And the other downside is it is now opaque, right? If I write anything behind here, it doesn't show up there. So depending on how you structure your image, uh, you get a much higher quality image, but there are some downsides to that. So there, those are the two basic approaches to doing it. And what we wanted to show you now is exactly how we do the digital image side, that insertion. So I'm gonna turn on the lights and we'll pull over to Eric's uh, side of things and we'll take a look at what he's doing over there. Hey guys, so it's Eric, uh, Learning Glass, and the first step to setting this up is uh, setting up your PowerPoint correctly. Um, I'll just open up the PowerPoint that we are using right now. It's the same one that you saw on the screen, and you're going to want to make sure that the text is nice and crisp and white, and also fairly legible to see. As well as your images, um, you want them to be transparent or as transparent as possible, otherwise you won't be able to see through them. The next step is to make the background a chroma keyed color, which is either this nice green color or a nice magenta or a nice blue. And to make sure that anything in your PowerPoint does not, or any images or any text does not have the same color as the background, otherwise they will look transparent in the uh, digital insertion. So once you have those three things done, which is pretty simple, you're going to go to this um, set up slideshow button in PowerPoint. And then there's a full tutorial on this all online. This is just a quick version. Instead of having it full screen like it normally is, you're going to click browse by an individual and then go to OK. And then you can start your PowerPoint from wherever. And I'll just shrink it just to make it a little easier. And then you're going to go to want, you're going to want to go to this program called um, OBS, which is Open Broadcast Server Service, uh, which is a freeware open source program that allows you to do a bunch of different cool features in um, uh, with your recordings. And in, our, in this case, we have our camera fed into a capture card, which then gets fed into OBS, and uh, you can see that in our sources down here. So to, uh, to get the full setup that we have, you're going to want to add a source, and then you're going to click, um, we have a black magic capture card, but there's a bunch of other ones. You can also use a video switcher to do this and a few other things. But once you pull that up, you're going to set up all your settings and get all that done, and then you'll have your image up on the screen like we do here. The next thing, the PowerPoint insertion, is uh, it's a window capture. So how it works is 
your PowerPoint right here is opened up in a small little window and the software captures the window so that when you switch the PowerPoints it's actually switching, it's, it's matching what you have on the screen to what is in the uh, recording or stream or whatever you might be doing with it. So as you can see here, this is uh, the exact same thing, but with a black background. Now you'll notice uh, on the screen, the black background is not transparent at all. That means if Matt or somebody were to go behind there. Um, Matt, you want to run back real quick? Yeah. So as you can see, Matt there, when he's behind it, you can't actually see his pretty face. So it's pretty sad. But if you switch back to a chroma key color, then you can see you can highlight everything just as he was doing just before. So setting up this is really simple to do, um, but like I said, there's a full tutorial on our website. Um, but you're going to go to filters under here, and then you're just going to set up an easy chroma key filter, um, which there's a bunch of stuff online for it. We have stuff on our website, like I said, once again. And you're just going to chroma key out the background so that it makes it all transparent in the video. And then once you have that all set up, then you're good to go. You can just switch through your PowerPoints like regular and do all that sort of fun stuff. You want to show them this keyboard too? Yeah, so we also have another keyboard set up so that the uh, presenter can switch the PowerPoints all on his own. Makes it a lot easier than having to nag at the uh, <laughs> person behind the computer. <laughs> All right, well that was uh, pretty much all we wanted to say and we thought we'd open it up for a Q&A at this point. So if you guys have some questions and want to chime in, um, we'd be happy to hang out for another 15 minutes or so and answer your questions. Nope, no questions yet. Here comes one. Owen Guthrie. Hi, Owen. Can you please show the plexiglass and the attachment? Yeah. So can you turn on the lights there, Sherry? You want to hold that camera, Eric, and oh, yeah. frame it up? So this is, uh, this is the plexiglass. Uh, this is actually for a, a different size uh, learning glass, but what we have here is the 60. And typically all you do is you, you figure out which side is the frosted side just by looking at it. And then you throw it up here, rest it on that mount, and then just take a, a spring clip and clip it on. Okay. That's pretty much it for the plexiglass. And then the other trick is, of course, getting the projector right. Eric, you want to go down and show them what the projector setup looks like? Yeah. There's the projector sitting right there, and you can see it's uh, uh, tilted up pretty high because we have it very uh, close. And uh, you'll have to play around with the, the skew on the, uh, the projector, you know, the keystoning options to get the image flat. But a decent projector has all those features. And then, like I said before, you have to do desktop rear display such that it projects correctly for the lecturer and then once the other camera flips it again, it'll be back to the correct orientation. All right, you got it, Owen. All right, other questions uh, out there? Okay, Vikram. Hello, Dr. Matt. Is it possible to include a video file animation in the recording using OBS? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, you can put a video recording up here. Um, we've done it with YouTube videos and all sorts of things. So any, any sort of image that you can put into OBS, uh, you can put up here on the screen. And in fact, um, here, let's get that. And in fact, uh, you can even use a separate camera source. So you can do multiple camera sources all into OBS. So one option is just to take your laptop here and feed it in as the other source. And then you have full control from your laptop here, and you can feed it in as a new camera source into OBS. Yeah, excellent question. 
James. Hello, Matt and Eric. Jay Creighton here. Hi, Jay. How you doing? Good, good to hear from you. I'm looking at your website right now and I'm trying to find exactly where on the site can be found the tutorials that Eric mentioned. Uh, yeah, the one that Eric mentioned is actually not turned on yet on the site. So we'll do that uh, shortly after this and make sure it's all ready to go. And we'll send out an email to everybody here and, and tell you where it's located, okay? Eric got a little excited about the write-up, but it's not live yet. So <laughs> we'll make it live very soon. Um, all right, Bill, how about for the small 20 by 30 board? Yeah, so uh, the... 20 by 30 board we're going to do a webinar uh, probably next month on the portable uh, unit. Um, if you're asking about frosted glass attachment for that, you can do the exact same thing. It's just a scaled down version of this. Obviously your projector needs to be able to project to a much smaller size. And the nice thing about that is your projector doesn't have to be quite as bright then, okay, because it is a lot closer. Um, so the 20 by 30 is a great uh, tool that I, in fact, use in my classroom all the time, and we'll do that in probably our next webinar. Jay says, I've, sub sub I've subscribed to Mimo Live for live streaming and recording. Is Eric familiar with Mimo Live for live streaming instead of OBS? Eric, have you ever heard of Mimo Live? I actually just heard of it yesterday. I have not done any research on it, though. Okay, Eric said he's heard of it all of since yesterday, and he hasn't done any research on it yet. So we'll have to get back to you on that. Yeah, there's a bunch of different softwares that you can do all this in. There's, uh, there's Wirecast. There's OBS, there's... Eric's mentioning that there's different uh, software like Wirecast, uh, OBS, Mimo, uh, Mimo Live apparently. Um, you know, any, any place where you can do live streaming, remember your camera is just feeding into the computer. So as long as you can get it into the computer properly, uh, then you can stream it via any service you want. All right, Vikram asks, Dr. Matt, this session was very helpful. Unfortunately, I missed the first webinar. Do you have a recording of the first webinar available online? Yes, we have put it online, uh, and we are in the process of adding a link to it on our website. Uh, so we will email out the, um, the YouTube link to this group that registered for today's webinar, and it, it will also be live. And this one today we'll put on our website as well. We're going to try and have a whole bank of these things on our uh, on our website because I think they're valuable and I, I like all the questions that we're getting okay let me see any other questions out there anybody else have any questions go ahead and chime away and I'll just monitor this for a second Eric do you want to take that image back off Sherry, do we have a date for our next webinar? We have not set a date yet. Usually it's the first Tuesday of the month. Okay. Not. Oh, is that not backwards, Eric? No, There we go. Can you look at my calendar? Have to do a little magic thing. Mm. So we're looking at probably uh, April 4th. April 4th? Or 11th. We'll send out an invitation. Okay, so it'll be 4-4 four, four or 4-11, and we will send out invitations to this group. And we will likely talk about the 30-inch uh, uh, portable unit in that discussion. Uh, Bill asked, I missed the beginning. Can you go over the flipping software? Uh, probably not super... Uh, not that quick um, because we're, we're running out of time, but we will have this whole thing uh, recorded, and so we'll share the link with, with all of you on that, okay? Um, basically, the software is you want to look at OBS uh, or Wirecast. Those are the two that we've primarily used. And um, the flipping that we do is, of course, in the uh, camera itself, but you can, of course, do it in the software as well. So I would take a look at that, OBS. What is it? Is that Open Broadcasting Service? service? Mm -hmm. Okay, OBS, Open Broadcasting Service.
All right, any other questions out there, guys? Okay, Jay said, when do you decide to use OBS or Wirecast? What are the pros and cons of each? Uh, the big pro of OBS is it's free, uh, and Wirecast costs money, so that's one thing. Um, there are little subtle features in each, and it has to do with how you set the transparency, the chroma key versus uh, being able to choose any color you want. Um, so there's little subtleties like that. Other than that, they're pretty comparable. We've had pretty comparable performance from both of them. Uh, OBS is open software, sort of shareware, and uh, so they're, they're uh, developing it all the time, and so you get updates all the time, which is nice. But Wirecast is a, is a professional software package. So either of those work great. Bill says, thanks. You're welcome, Bill. Thanks for joining us. All right, let's see. Um, Jay says, you were using OBS for this webinar, so does this mean that Chroma Key is better with OBS? Uh, Eric, which I, one? I found that OBS is better because it has more function or more controls and more settings. Okay. You can pick the colors too. Eric says he prefers uh, OBS for the Chroma Key because uh, you have a few more settings and you can pick the color. It doesn't have to be that green Chroma Key. You could even make black the transparent or red. So OBS is a little more versatile in that respect. Thanks for answering these questions, Matt and Eric. You're very welcome. Yeah, we're, uh, we're having a good time doing these webinars, and uh, we're going to try and do them uh, every month and introduce something new. A lot of people were... Uh, very curious about this frosted glass approach. And it's a nice approach, but it does take us a little bit of setup time. You know, you have to play around a little bit with the alignment of everything. So it's, it's not necessarily uh, for everyone out there. Um, the digital insertion is a great way to go. But again, if you really want to be able to register your pen exactly where it is on that image, the frosted glass is really currently the only way to do that. All right, if there's no more questions out there, I think we might wrap it up because we're getting close to the half an hour mark. Uh, let me just check with Sherry. Anything else that I... Okay. No, no outstanding questions that I missed, Sherry? Okay. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next month at the next webinar. And uh, continue to educate clearly. Cheers.